low to medium density residential, character residential, and low density residential. Do you know what these terms mean? They're the names for council's most common residential zones. And in this video, we're gonna cover off the intent behind each one of those zones, as well as the requirements. So that next time you're in front of a prospective client, you can just throw the information out there and make yourself sound like a pro. As I said before, in this video, we're gonna cover off the intent and the requirements behind council's most common residential zones. And we're gonna use this table behind me to do that. As you can see across the top here, we've got each of those zones listed. LMR, low to medium density residential, character residential two, CR2, LDR, low density residential, and CR1, character residential one. Technically under the LMR, we have three subcategories, one, two, and three. I know the names are creative, right? <laughs> I haven't bothered to actually rate those down for the purpose of this video because the requirements and the intent is so similar. Whereas when it comes to character residential one and character residential two, the requirements are actually vastly different. So let's start off number one with the intent. The intent for the LMR or low to medium density residential area is to have a semi equal mix of houses and units. Typically it's two story units. It's only within subcategory three, LMR three, where you can typically get that third story. There is some, and I mean some, tiny, tiny chances to get LMR2 up to three stories in height. Those chances or those opportunities are so rare that I don't even bother talking about it normally. So I typically say LMR1 and LMR2 is two story houses and units, a mix. LMR3 could be two story, it could be three story, but either way, it's still that mix of houses and units. So the intent, let's go units plus houses. Now we come to CR2. CR2 is intended to be a stepping stone between LMR and these other two. It's basically where you see the council trying to preserve the original pre-1947 houses while still accommodating some higher densities around it. So this is where you typically see that traditional pre-1947 house at the front and maybe two or three townhouses at the back. So again here, it's more I would say tipping towards houses than units, but you're still going to get that mix of units plus houses with the houses being the original uh, traditional Queenslanders, those sorts of things. Now we come to, actually let's skip over to CR1. Probably should have swapped them around, it's a bit more logical to go that way. CR1 is intended to be the next step down from CR2. It's where we see the preservation of pre-1947 houses without any units. In this zone, council actively discourages the creation of townhouses, units, those higher densities. So it is literally just houses. The reason for this is that council believes that the big backyard is equally as important to the character of the area as the structure itself. So they've designed the rules and requirements, which we'll get to for this actual zone, to reinforce the fact that they want to preserve those pre-46, oh, I should say pre-47, get my terminology correct, pre-47 houses on big blocks. Coming back to LDR, that's the next step down of CR1 in the respect that it is houses, just like CR1, but they're not original Queenslanders. They're typically post-1946 houses. So again, we'll go houses here. Now we come back to height. We touched on this before when it comes to LMR. You're looking at predominantly two stories with a little bit of three stories. <laughs> CR2, LDR and CR1 are pretty much all the same. They're going to be one to two stories each. Lot sizes. Okay, when it comes to LMR, you can develop lots that are 600 square meters for the purpose of units and townhouses. When it comes to subdivisions, the lot sizes range from 180 square meters if you're in LMR3 to 260 square meters in LMR1 or 2 for a front lot. And then they're 350 square meters for a rear lot. So a lot that doesn't have direct frontage to the road, which exceeds essentially the access handle. So lot sizes, we're going to go 180 to 260 for front lots and 350 excluding the access handle for rear lots. When it comes to CR2, the requirements state that you need a minimum of 300 square meters for a front lot and 450 square meters for a rear lot. When it comes to units, you technically need a minimum of 800 square meters before you can start doing units or townhouses. However, the requirements also say that you need a maximum, maximum minimum, 
yeah, maximum <laughs> yield of one per 300 square meters. So essentially, if you want to get three units on there, you need 900 square meters. Now we come to LDR. The minimum lot size requirements here state that you need 400 square meters for a front lot and 600 square meters for a rear lot. There is one exception to this rule, and that's if you're located within 200 meters safe walking distance of a center with a combined site area of more than 2,000 square meters. We did a video on this recently, so if you want to know a little bit more about that topic, just go back and watch that one. When it comes to units and townhouses, you need a minimum land area of 3,000 square meters if you want to do anything in this zone. Council is actively trying to discourage units in this area, unless they're massive land parcels. So you can pretty much say, it's safe to say, units aren't a go in this low density residential zone, because it's rare to actually find the land that qualifies for that. Then we come to CR1. The minimum lot size is 450 square meters for a front lot and 600 square meters for a rear lot. This is pretty much the only zone under City Plan 2014 where the lot sizes went up. And it comes back to the intent. Like I said, Council wants to preserve the original pre-1947 houses with the big backyards around them. So that's why they've gone so high in here. And that is what's catching a lot of people out. They don't realise that they can have to do 450 when they're hearing all these amazing crazy numbers down here. When it comes to units, it's just a no-go. Council, oh, you technically can lodge an application for it, but you're wasting your money, you're wasting your time. It's not going to be supported. Don't even bother when it comes to CR1. So yeah, technically they're not prohibited, but they're virtually prohibited in that zone. So there you go, just to recap, the intent of LMR is to see a mix of houses and units, predominantly two storeys. The intent of CR2 is a stepping stone between these units and the more house-based uses. So you start to see a mix of houses and units, slightly more houses than units. You still have that minimum lot size requirements or maximum yield requirements, I should say, of one per 300 when it comes to units and townhouses, which makes it quite hard to actually develop these for units. The reality is in my time, the last three years since the scheme came into effect, I can't actually recall, maybe there was only one or two examples where we've done units in this zone. The feasibilities just don't stack up for people at this point. They're more valuable as single house blocks. Over time, obviously that will change, but at this point, that's what we're looking at there. Low density residential, that's more your outer lying suburban areas. Once you get out like the Stafford, Kenmore, those sort of areas. This is where you start to see those more modern houses. And then CR1, character residential one, that's where council wants the big backyard around the traditional Queenslander. They want to preserve that character. That is the primary focus in that area. I think that covers everything I wanted to say. If you've liked this video and you want to watch more of our videos, I would encourage you to go to our Facebook news feed or our YouTube channel and watch through our back catalog, catalog, I words out, catalog of videos. Until next time, thanks for watching. For all you red tape lovers out there, I have one thing to say. Well, no, actually, I've got three. Number one, the advice provided in these videos is general in nature. It's not site specific. You would be a silly billy to go and make financial decisions based on this advice without first checking with the town planner. Don't be a silly billy. Number two, Brisbane Town Planning is in no way linked to Brisbane City Council. The views expressed in these videos are my own, not council's. So if you don't like them, blame me, not council. Number three, what was my number three? Oh yeah, the views expressed in these videos are accurate at the time of recording. If you're watching this video back 10 years from now, the views may not be so accurate. That's all.